is in the scene. Rocco literally walks in. Angela comes out of makeup. She's got her hair back in clips. They greet each other and they just start fucking. Yeah. Like right away. And I, I Rosalind was doing makeup, right? Yes. She yeah. must have been back there and be like, mother. <laughs> like I know exactly what she was like, oh, forget it. Forget it. I was almost done with her face. She did my makeup three times. <laughs> like basically from scratch. Thank God yeah. she is such she's such a great woman yeah. and is such a positive, amazing yeah. attitude. Cause I could see some other people getting real yeah. pissed. I think she, she, I think she found it a little bit amusing, like yeah. annoying and amusing, yeah. but I think she saw the fun in it. But yeah, she, she told me that I was being bad. She, she <laughs> roused me at one point. Yeah. I, was like, oh. I couldn't help it. He's yeah. just, he is so charismatic and he's, there is this incredible presence mm-hmm. with Rocco. He's, mm-hmm. Ah, oh, when he walks in the room, it's not just the women that look, it's the men. Yeah. Like everybody wants to be near Rocco. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was an incredible day, an incredible scene. It was so many times before we even started the scene and it was just crazy. It was insane. The the most insane scene I've ever done, the roughest scene, the the yeah. most insane bef- beforehand, the lead up was just insane because yeah. he, he ends up sticking it in my butt without without even spitting on it. He's yeah. Ju- and he's huge. He yeah. He's a huge cock. Yeah. And, but this man, like, he's a machine and he's yeah. 54 or something. And, and he was pulling out some um, positions I had not yeah. seen before. I was like, that like reverse titty fucking thing. I, I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> he. he- Harder and longer than some of these, you know, new eighteen-year-olds. Like yeah. he is an absolute machine. I like his sexual drive, his sexual energy, his presence. Everything is just so intense with him, and the way his eyes burn when he mm-hmm. looks at you. Yeah. It's, Do you yeah. find I've I've heard some other girls say that sometimes they find that the European performers mm-hmm. tend to have that kind of intensity mm-hmm. that um, sometimes American performers don't have as much. Yeah, I mean, all all my favorite male performers yeah. happen to be European. Yeah, and Marcus Dupree, who's, you know, kind of like the new big stud on campus, came from boot camp Rocco. Yeah, he was I mean, trained by Rocco. he credits Rocco with mm-hmm. teaching him everything he knows and Marcus is probably one of the strongest performers in our industry today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, so he came in, you guys had sex right away. And it's hilarious, too, because John Stagliano is just like trying, he's like, what, what, I'm trying to, what happened? I haven't even started shooting yet. Like, I don't have my camera. And he's like on his phone. He's like, what's going on here? And so, so there was that. And then they finally stopped you and did your makeup again. And then during photos, did you guys just go nuts again, too? So they finally, so yeah, the crew started freaking out because Chris didn't have, the microphone on the camera. So yeah. and and so we we came out and started f-ing, but nobody knew that he was going to have energy to con- f-ing me later yeah. for the scene. So that's Chris, always like the biggest concern. Yeah, yeah. And and so Chris obviously wanted to film it, but he didn't have a mic on his camera. And so that's when John got his phone. It's like I'll get audio with my phone. It was chaos. It was yeah. absolute madness, and everybody was freaking out. And they were trying to get us off off of each other, and it was just <laughs> impossible. And was that the one time that you like kind of let go of your like professionalism, I, perfectionism, and you were just like, "Fuck it, I'm going to enjoy the moment." I well, this was such a unique opportunity because um, if people have watched the the Netflix documentary on mm-hmm. Rocco, they know that he actually retired. So mm-hmm. he is back shooting a, some scenes now, but he he. He planned on retiring. He did a whole Netflix documentary about his retirement. Came I didn't over, realize that was on Netflix. Yes. I've seen the trailer for it, but I didn't realize yeah, it was on Netflix. Definitely recommend you watching it. It's it's incredible, and it definitely gives you a sort of an insight into his mind mm. and you know his sexuality and some it's somewhat tormented sexuality. It's very very interesting. I can imagine. I mean, when you've got that kind of strong sexuality and it's been such a huge driving part of your life, it's. It's also got to be a tough thing to let go mm-hmm. of, you know. I mean, I know my mom, when she retired, I mean, just letting, not her sexuality, but, you know, being Suze Randall and who she was and the the icon that she was, it was a very difficult thing for her to let go because that was wrapped up so much in, um, you know, who she was as a her person. Her identity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, Rocco clearly, I mean, he tried to retire. <laughs> He's back shooting some movies in um, in Budapest, mm-hmm. but he had not been back to America to, 
to shoot. Mm -hmm. And this was a very unique opportunity because Rocco has never flown to America just to shoot one scene with one girl. Right, He's right. come over and shoot a bunch of movies. Right. But this was crazy. He even says in the documentary, you know, I thought it was a, in his sexy accent, yeah. I thought it was a crazy idea to come yeah. over and shoot with one girl yeah. for one scene, for right. one movie. Yeah. And so this was such a unique opportunity that when our chemistry was like crazy straight off the bat, I was like, you know what, I, I'm just going to go with this. I, yeah. don't care. I don't care. Were you nervous going into it that like maybe you wouldn't have that or something? I mean, he flew out all the way to shoot this scene. Like, what, I mean, what was going through your head? There, that's, felt like, there was a lot of pressure. You yeah. Know? I felt like there was a lot of pressure. I didn't, I didn't think there would be no chemistry because I, did, I had actually met him at AVN. So at a, that was the first time we went yeah. at AVN this year, and it was like five minutes that we saw each other. But even then, I felt the connection immediately. Right, the way right. he looked at me, the way we felt, there was like this. Mm -hmm. There was so much tension between us, and so, and I think that that is probably the reason that he agreed to come out here. I know he he mentions in the documentary that you know the wins that I got at AVN and the way people talked about me, but that. That moment when we met at AVN on the floor and we just connected so quickly, I just knew that there would be chemistry. But still, there's a lot of pressure to, to, to have someone fly across the globe just mm -hmm. to f*** you. Yeah. It's like, wow, you better make it good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. 